Hello, and welcome to Portfolio Matters Share Talk. In today's episode, I will be doing a quick run through of Advance Energy, which is a newly listed oil, I would say, investment company that is currently having a well drilled on the Buffalo field in Timor Lesse, and that should come in within the next two weeks. So this is very much a live well, which will have huge implications for the valuation of advanced energy. So I wanted to get it out ASAP. But before we, I get into it, I will read the disclaimer. Everything discussed during the Portfolio Matters podcast is for informational purposes only, should not be considered as investment advice. Listeners should be aware that we will be discussing securities that we own or have financial interest in. Please do your own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. A full disclaimer can be found at the end. Okay, Advance Energy. It's recently listed last year. Its first project is a 50% stake in the Buffalo Field, Timor Lesse, where Carnarvon Petroleum, their partner in the field, are currently drilling the Buffalo 10, 10 appraisal well, and that is expected to be completed on or around the 1st of February. But in an interview today, the CEO stated that they would intersect with the top of the oil reservoir in around 12 days time. So it's very much live. Okay, in summary, full disclosure, I own a load of this, I really like it. And I hope that by the end of this presentation, you will see why. Okay, it's a newly listed oil and gas company, but is it really? I think it's really an oil and gas investment vehicle. So it has been set up to acquire non-operating stakes in companies that are reworking abandoned oil fields. And Buffalo is an example of that. So Buffalo was um, in operation and producing up to 40,000 barrels a day, but then was abandoned when he was still producing around 4,000 barrels a day because essentially the FPSO came to the end of its contract and they didn't really feel it was worth continuing. But Buffalo Field has been remapped by Carnarvon and it looks like using new 3D seismic that the previous operators missed the attic, so the dome of the oil field. So Carnarvon and Advance are drilling an appraisal well into this attic accumulation, which looks really good. So I've been through the CPR, we will go through the CPR, and you will see that risk who did the CPR estimate that there's between a 90 and 95% chance of finding oil commercial quantities of oil. And frankly, it don't get much better than that. Okay, so this is Advanced Petroleum's first investment. And if this well comes through in commercial quantities, and we'll go through the CPR, and there's a total of 85% chance of this being developed according to risk. But um, a lot of that risk is just in getting financing and finding the, the um, FPSO, et cetera, to actually have it developed. The geological risk of finding the oil where they think of it is, is there's only about 5 and 10% chance of in the commercial, um, commercial quantities of oil not being there. So this looks really good. And we will do our own. NPV calculation. And if it comes in, really advanced energy should be worth multiples of what it is now just on the Buffalo field. And in recent interviews, 
the CEO has stated that they are currently in the process of evaluating two Buffalo-like opportunities. So I like the business model. So quickly going through their share price history, and you know they were only listed in March last year. And since then, the shares have drifted up. But going through the, the history, really, there were no nasties, which is mainly what I do it for. It was um, changed its name from Andalus Energy and Power PLC to Advanced Energy in February last year. It did a raising in November 2020 uh, for 300K at then 0.22p. There's been a share consolidation since. Now, in December 2020, it announced the agreement with Carnarvon to farm into the Buffalo field. That was completed in April 2021. In March 2021, the share consolidation and also raised $30 million at 2.6p to fund the drilling of the Buffalo 10 appraisal well, which was spudded on the 31st of December and is expected to be completed around the 1st of February. Okay, so let's go through their latest presentation quickly. So they are targeting discovered resources. I think this is really interesting, a really interesting business model. You know, rather because of the lack of investment in oil and gas development and exploration around the world, world, there are a lot of assets which are known and which just need development. So advanced are going to farm into those and be non-operators. So they're not going to do the work. They're going to provide the financing. Essentially, advance's role is to evaluate all these opportunities and find the financing. And for that, I mean, as we go through the economics of the Buffalo field, I mean, it lo looks to me like Advance have got an amazing deal. OK, so for the 20 million that they have put into the Buffalo field, they get a 50 percent stake. And essentially that tw 20 million goes to funding the appraisal well. So in essence, what they've done is they've paid 10 million to fund Carnarvon's half of the appraisal drilling. And they're stating that Buffalo has the potential to produce up to 40,000 barrels a day within three years. So essentially, if the appraisal well comes in, then really it's probably going to take two years to get first oil out of the Buffalo field. Now they're saying it could be done faster, but risk who did the CPR are conservatively saying two years. Okay, so who are the team? Well, they have a lot of experience. The um, CEO says they, between them, they have something like 120 years of experience in oil and gas, but we will go through all their LinkedIn profiles a bit later. So we'll skip this for now. The farming agreement is that they will pay for 100% of the appraisal well, but then they will secure funding for CapEx to First Oil. Now, in recent interviews, the CEO has been saying that they were actually in talks with lenders prior to the farming in to um, the Buffalo field. And that because they've got so much experience in the industry, they have personal links to investment banks and also to the trading arms of the oil majors, and they are confident that they will get funding. You'll notice that they state that the farming agreement is for them to secure funding. It is not for them to fund development to CapEx. It's just to find the money. OK, so this is an overview of the Buffalo field. The original wells, development wells for Buffalo were here on the outskirts in the pink areas. And actually, when they redid the um, 3D seismic, they found that there were these undeveloped attics and the Buffalo 10 well 
will drill into the top of one of them. And as I stated earlier, advance see their aim as identifying assets like Buffalo, where there is, um, they know the oil's there, and it's just a question of um, drilling into it and um, bringing these neglected oil discoveries into operation. Okay, so let's go through the CPR. Okay, a reminder of the oil reserve classification system. So currently, the reserves in the Buffalo field are contingent, and they are contingent because they haven't done an appraisal well. So they know the oil is wet there, but they, they don't know how much. And when they've done the appraisal work, well, that will move into reserves because they'll be able to estimate exactly how much, how much oil there actually is there. Okay, so a history of the buffalo field. It was discovered by BHP in 1996, and between 1999 and 2004, BHP and Nexon, who they sold the field to, produced 20 and a half million barrels of light oil from a good sandstone reservoir. In 2016, Carnarvon Petroleum acquired the exploration permit for the Buffalo field and remapped the field using modern 3D seismic. And we will show you that the remapping has identified the crest of the field as further west than previously thought and created this opportunity to redevelop the field. They estimate that in the mid case, there's about 34 million barrels of oil remaining. Now, Timor Lesse take 35%. So that leaves 25 million to Carnarvon and Advance. And of that, Advance Energy share is 12 and a half million barrels, mid case. Low case, 6 million, upper case, 22. Now this is a map of where it is. Now, the field used to be in Australian waters, but the blue line is the new boundary and that puts it in Timor-Lesse waters. And Timor-Lesse had to offer the same production sharing economics as Australia when the oil field moved from Australian to Timor-Lesse waters. Okay, so a quick development history. I'm not going to go through all this one by one. This is from the um, CPR and it lists all of the nine previous wells drilled by Nexon and BHP. If you're interested, pause the video, have a read. And moving on to the production history, well, it was a productive field. They had initial peak rates for 19,000 to 22,000 barrels a day from wells three, five, and seven, and 7,000 barrels a day from Buffalo nine. But very quickly, you get a water cut, a high water cut. And then they had to do a uh, gas lift. Buffalo nine watered out in late 2003, and the other wells were shut at the end of their economic life in late. 2004. So their lives were partially curtailed by limited gas availability or gas lift. Um, cumulative oil production was 20.6 million barrels. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. This is from the CPR and it's the remapped field. So the darker orange is elevations. So it's where the oil will be trapped in a dome. So Buffalo 10 is here. So these are the previous Buffalo fields, which were highly productive, producing up to 20,000 barrels a day initially from three, five, and seven. So three, five, which is seven is not on this map, were producing at 20,000 barrels a day initially. Buffalo 10 looks really good, but there are these other attics which presumably have smaller accumulations, which also look okay. So it looks like there could be significant oil trapped in other areas of the field, not just in this dome targeted by Buffalo 10. So this is a histogram 
from the CPR, which was put together by the risk consultancy, and it is their estimates of the stock tank original oil in place and is the results of 500 simulation runs. Now, my interpretation of this is that the best case has oil originally in place of around 106 million and the X axis shows the range of possible outcomes. So the maximum would be about 200 and the minimum about 65. And there's actually a quite broad range of possible outcomes between any 70 and 160. And the median, I would say, is probably around between 90 and 100. So a broad range of possible outcomes are possible. And reminder that 20.6 million barrels has already been produced, so that, that would give about 85 million left. Okay, so this is how they're aiming to develop the field. MOPU is a mobile, mobile offshore production unit. A PLET is a pipeline end termination, and the FSO is a floating support offtake vessel. And the Buffalo development costs are estimated to be $145 million. And they estimate it will cost $60.4 million per annum in production costs. And the risks are that with higher oil prices and rising capex in um, oil and gas, that competition for um, oil field services leads to inflation and that number could rise. So that is a risk. The production schedule, if the Buffalo 10 well is successful. Now, Carnarvon estimated it's going to take 18 months from post appraisal to first oil. And BHP actually did it in 15 months when they originally developed the field. But that would involve them leasing an existing mobile offshore production unit and floating storage offtake vessel with appropriate specifications without having to do too much modifications. Risks say this is achievable but probably aggressive and they are adding an extra six months to, to uh, finalise development concept, etc, etc. So two years. And now I thought this is really important and very interesting. The blue line is the mean case. The red line is the low case, so they don't file as much oil as it anticipated. The green line is the best anticipated case. And what is great is that production will be very fast. So this field will flow quickly. So you'll get peak production of 30,000 barrels a day and then decay quite quickly. And that means you're getting the cash up front. So the NPV calculation is maximized, which means that even in the low case, this should be a commercial proposition. Okay, so this is reserve summary. 2C case, mid case, there are 34 million barrels left of which 25 million goes to the contractors and half of which is available to advance. Okay, risks. So the risk consultancy, RASC, the consultancy, are stating that there's a 90% probability that the recoverable oil is within the 1C to 3C range. But obviously, we don't care if it's above the 3C range. So there's a 95% chance that they will find commercial oil, which is amazing. It do really doesn't get much better than that. But then they, uh, they ascribe 95% chances to finding except for commercial arrangements for the uh, facilities, that's the FPSO and the MOPU, 95% uh, chance that they will um, secure funding for the development. So 95% times 95% times 95% is 86%. They, they reckon there's an 86% chance this will get developed. The fiscal terms from Timor Lesse. So we cover 100% of costs, 65% uh, contractor share oil profit, i.e., 
30% in corporation tax and 5% goes in revenue. So contractors get 35% of uh, the oil, state takes 35%. I believe uplift is how you account for the time value of your costs. If anyone knows better, please get in touch. Okay, so risk consultancy calculate the, the NPV of the field to advance um, using $50 a barrel and a discount rate of 10%. In the 2C case, it's worth 169 million. In the low case, it's worth 69 million. Bear in mind, the market cap is 54. So even in the worst case, if they find oil, advances market value will be supported by the development of the Buffalo field with anything that else they do free. Okay, in recent interviews, the CEO has stated that they're aiming to become a um, mid-tier producer, producing about 20,000 barrels a day by mid-decade. And also interesting about um, the farm out of the Buffalo field. So Carnarvon actually started looking for a farm out partner back in December 2018 and Advance farmed in in March 2021, two and a half years later. So it doesn't look like Carnarvon were overwhelmed with offers, which is great because the more difficulty these um, companies have in funding, the better position Advance are because Advance provide the money. And they also talk about how they're aiming to fund development through debt, not equity, which is a noble ambition. Let's see if they manage it. OK, now what about Carnarvon Energy, their partner? Well, it's actually been on the Australian market for a very long time. And looking on their website, they have lots of exploration projects, but no actual production. Therefore, no experience in actually bringing a field into production. And remember that Advance are non-operators. They won't be doing this themselves. They are relying on Carnarvon to actually bring the field into production. And the quite obvious question would be, do Carnarvon have the expertise? Okay, on to the board. Right, well, this is the chairman, Mark Rollins. And this is quite an interesting CV. So he's the non-executive director of Tenaz Energy, but also of Rockfall Therapeutics, non-executive chairman of Advance. And uh, he has some experience in the um, oil and gas industry. He was at Arco and then British Gas, or BG Group, Avanti Petroleum. But then Nuon, managing director, B2B sales and marketing. Anyway, diverse CV. Leslie Peterkin is a director at Petroleum Insights, which is a consultancy. And Advance is really a financing company. It's providing the farm, it's farming into developments, it's not actually operating them. So, you know, that looks like an appropriate CV to me. And they all have uh, experience in the uh, industry. So, this is Stephen West who is the CFO, so he has experience as a, in finance in the oil and gas industry, although 2009 to 2012, mining. So mining and oil and gas. And on the board, I notice they have the former CEO of Chariot Oil and Gas, who Chariot Oil and Gas, now he's left, have um, done the Anchua development today. And it's... Um, found a discovery, which is great. Remember, under his watch, it weren't so good. And I was a shareholder in Chariot when they uh, drilled a series of dry wells in Namibia and, off, and um, offshore Morocco. And Stephen White, another non-executive director, was um, vice president at BG Group and spent 14 years at World Dutch Shelf. So there's an experienced team. Okay, now an NPV calculation. Right, first of all, the mid case. Now, risk have an NPV 10 of 169 million based on oil at $50 and inflation at 2%. Initial capex 145 million, as we have covered, OPEX 60.4 million per annum, decommissioning costs of 28.5 million. I have done an NPV calculation using these numbers 
and are using the same data, I get a number of 193 million, which is 14% higher. Now I'm going to share my spreadsheet, which is pretty basic, on our Discord for people to play around with if they so choose. But bottom line, we're going to redo the NPV calculation using $70 a barrel. And I'm going to assume that my calculation is 14% too high. So redoing it at $70 a barrel, inflation at 5% per annum, I get NPV of 263 million, i.e. multiples of the market cap of 54 million. So if the oil price stays at these levels and the Buffalo field comes in, this is going to be worth a lot. The it should be worth multiples of advances current market cap. And bear in mind, Brent is currently above 80. If it stays that way, NPV increases to a 320 million. Okay, on to the low case. Well, risk estimate that if they only find oil equivalent to the 1C case, that at $50 a barrel, the NPV of advances share would be 69 million. Now, you, I have um, tried to replicate their calculation and I get a value of 65 million, i.e. roughly the same. So I will not be adjusting my calculation for the $70 case. And my calculation of the MPV 10 at $70 is 116 million, i.e. more than double the current market cap. So even if it comes in a low case, this should be very good for the advanced energy share price. And at $80 a barrel, that rises to 146 million. So over two and a half times current market cap. But this is the mineral discovery life cycle chart. And I think we're here. Now, if um, Buffalo 10 well comes in positive, you can expect a leap in the share price because we have then proved up the amount of oil. But then there will be a period during which they have to get the funding, find the FSO, et cetera, and develop the field, during which time there's going to be not much news and you can expect the share price to drift off unless advance bring online some other opportunities equivalent to Buffalo. So on to the positives and negatives. Well, I really like this. I think um, the um, economics are really astonishing, actually. It just goes to show the importance of finance in an industry where essentially the ESG movement is starving it of capital. And if you can provide capital, then you get just astonishing economics. Essentially, advance have done none of the work. So there was this old field which Carnarvon bought the license for and then did a 3D seismic. They've done all the work. And then advance just turn up with 20 million and they pay for the first appraisal well. In essence, all they've done is pay Carnarvon Petroleum's half of the appraisal well for 10 million. And for that, they get 50% of the entire field, which is worth 100, 260 million mid case, according to us. And that's 190 million quid. It's an astonishing deal. Um, obviously, oil prices are high and frankly rising, around 80 million, eight, sorry, they're around $80 uh, dollars a barrel. And Regular viewers of the week will know that I have a very large allocation to oil and gas stocks because I think we are heading into um, an oil crisis because of the lack of capex over the last few years. The Buffalo 10 well is currently being drilled and has a very high chance of success. And there's not long to wait. A couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, and we will get results. And the shares look incredibly cheap. If this comes in, it could be a proper multi bagger. The negatives. Actually, before I do the negatives, if anyone is here from the bulletin boards and is expecting a puff piece, then that is not what we do on this podcast. We always go through the positives and the negatives. So there's a 5% risk that Buffalo 10 will not be commercial. 
which frankly is very low. But as I've said, even if it does come in, there were, could be up to two years before you first oil, and obviously the oil price could go anywhere in that period. Also, high oil prices may well limit the availability of further deals in that it could attract capital to, in which case, advance will face competition. Now, in recent interviews, the um, CEO has basically said they have a number of things in the pipeline. And from my observation of reading the FT, it seems that, you know, we're still getting fund managers dumping all their oil and gas stocks. And there doesn't seem much risk of more money capital flowing into this industry currently, but that could change. Obviously, though, they do have to get funding for to complete the development of the Buffalo field. And although the management have been in talks with investment banks and the trading arms of the majors, there is no guarantee they'll actually get the money. But above all, I mean, the biggest risk is they are farming into these small developments, fill-in developments, with small operators. Do they have the expertise to actually successfully do these opera developments on time and on budget you've seen that Carnarvon actually are an exploration play they don't have any developments in operation so this will be new to them that's a risk but in summary I really like this um I've got a decent holding and um I am looking forward to the well coming in but as always, do your own research. If you have uh, just come across this channel, our main output is the weekly update and overview of um, the economy and markets. And I hope you'll check that out. In the meantime, please, can you press like and subscribe to the channel? And it is goodbye from me, Keith Jordan. Goodbye. Full disclaimer. The material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, We make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages or for any results obtained from use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.